Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you for all your time. The, uh, which is, I come from HKT. I'm in charge in the cloud business or uh, in, within HKT. May I ask one question first? Any guys here are uh, in the IT fields? Can you raise your hands? Yep. I, I see that. Um, I don't know whether you have visited the Cloud Expose in the last few years. There is a lot of transformation here. In the old days, if you remember, still remember the, f the first year in the Cloud Expo, um, there is a lot of um, information talking about how the enterprise adopt with the cloud technology, why the cloud is a, um, a, a mature technology that you can adopt with. But since last year, people are not, no longer talking about that. People are talking about how you implement in the cloud even multiple cloud services. And this year, you can see that more and more different types of solutions, more and more, and more types of um, capabilities that can deliver over the cloud. But still, there will be one critical problem, is that how can we, as an enterprise, as an IT, we adopt with the cloud technology, even though even we're talking about multi-cloud nowadays. So that today, I would like to share with you uh, that our recent experience that in the last few years, we uh, visit a lot of customers. We talk with a lot of customers in uh, enterprise in Hong Kong and do a lot of the cloud adoption project. So that today, I will share with you some of the common practice or a kickstart, how an enterprise to kickstart their cloud uh, adoption journey. First, um, cloud is an interesting technology that always have a lot of terminologies. Starting from the day one, a cloud. People asking, what is cloud? Cloud is just a, a, a something technologies, a business model or a service delivery model, IT service delivery model. From time to time, there will be some hybrid cloud, hybrid cloud, IAS, PAS, SAS, a lot of terminologies. And last year, people talking about multi-cloud. First, I would like to define some sort of what leads to multi-cloud first. Um, People are talking multi-cloud. Multi-cloud is using multiple cloud services. For example, public cloud service in a single unit, uh, in a single architecture or for a single applications. So that people, some, some people using cloud, they migrate their application to cloud, they gain their agility, they gain their cost efficiency or the capability. But we have a question is that, is that a single cloud service provider can fulfill all your requirements? Is that the best fit to all enterprise for all different type of capability? The answer is no. Each cloud service provider, they have their own strength. Maybe a geographic redundancy, maybe their application development, maybe their API, maybe their connectivity. So that not a single cloud provider can fulfill all the enterprise requirements if you are thinking, um, adopt your IT strategy with a cloud-first strategy. So that people were asking whether we can have adopt with multiple cloud, but multiple cloud bring out a lot of challenge there. First, maybe, maybe we talk about what is, what is the difference between multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. Some people think, say that um, multi-cloud is just another terminology of hybrid cloud. In some Gartner report, it defined that um, Multi-cloud is talking about a single application, a single architecture using multiple cloud or multiple public cloud. And hybrid cloud is the deployment model that you will leverage on the private cloud and also the public cloud. That is a little bit different. If you are talking about the multi-cloud, that means you have to think carefully about how to distribute different workloads, different applications, or different capability in different cloud service provider. In the hybrid cloud, mainly maybe you think about on the security, on the compliance, whether the data can be put on the public cloud or whether the application can put on the private cloud or the usability, whether the users can connect to the public cloud will be easier or just internal users to use the private cloud. And also, of course, all, all on the flexibility and scalability of that part. There's a quite difference that if you are thinking about multi-cloud, more problems or more questions you have to think before you adopt the multi-cloud strategy. First, uh, I think that it's quite interesting that IT becomes more and more directly contributing to the business in recent years. I, I don't know whether you feel that. I visited uh, last, just last 
uh, last week, I visited an a enterprise customer that is a Garmin customer. The IT, in the old days, they just uh, run a call support. If the end user have any problems on the IT system, they just answer the questions on that part. That is more a back-end role. But nowadays, all the CIOs are being asked that why the technologies can benefit to their own business. Why do the technologies can directly contribute to the business, for example, to innovations, for example, to create a new business, to support to a new business on that part. So when we're talking about all the cloud strategy or the IT strategy, first, we have to think, why the, what kind of business benefit, what kind of objective that you would like to deliver? For example, maybe there will be some operation excellence. You want to apply with, adopt with the cloud technology to better streamline your process, to ease off your workload, to more, make the people work more efficient. Or maybe you would like to drive more innovations because maybe because of the cloud, the agility, the time to market, so that you can bring out new ideas, adopt with that test and that, and bring out a new business to that, so that you bring out more agility to the business, to test or to implement with the new business idea. Or maybe you would like to have better engagement with the customer so that you have better servers, better IT servers, just a very, very easy example that on the web. You put your website on the cloud so that maybe you enjoy with the agility, the performance, the geographic redundancy so that you can have better performance when your, end, uh, when your customer go to your website so that all the IT projects should have a business requirement behind. Because uh, just last year, I, I was at some CIO. They, they have one thing asked us, Stanley, we would like to adopt with cloud, but we don't know how. So I asked him, what are the objectives that you would like to deliver? If you not yet deliver your objective of the whole strategy, the objective of that part, how to bring out the business value? Nothing you can start with. Maybe the benefit is spec. Maybe the benefits is small, but at least you got some business value on the IT projects before you start with that. So that back to the multi cloud strategies, you have to define what kind of benefits that you would like to deliver to the enterprise after the change, after the adoption with the cloud, after the adoption with the digital transformation technologies. Then what are the ideal, um, ideal environment that you would like to have? People will ask if we define the objective and we define the target operations. But actually, in our IT points of view, how, how we can actually kickstart the project? How can we to do the migration strategy, or the IT strategy, or the cloud strategy? One of the common, uh, one of the, one of the common um, migration methodology that we call 6R, which is one of the, um, the, the methodology that we typically used to our enterprise customer to help them to classify the workload. What is the six hour? There, there will be some applications that you just retain it, don't move it, because that already in the optimized environment, so that you know that that is not the target that you have to do it. Maybe you have to rehose it. The existing platform to hosting this application is just not effective at all. So that maybe you just rehost the application to another platform, for example, a cloud platform. Something maybe we have to think about, we architect or we factor, somebody called it. That is, you have to redesign the overall architecture. Maybe you have to break down the component to put in different environment so that you have to redesign the overall architecture of the, the existing applications. Maybe you have to re-perform it. Just like um, people were talking about Docker, container, is that you have to develop the platform in this new platform to hosting the application for addressing some part of your benefit. Just like agility, maybe microservice that is you're looking for, then you have to think about we platform it. And then some easy way, as a, as a service provider, that is the most easy way that you have to, uh, you, you do that, we purchase it. You just purchase another system to replace the original one. But obviously, is that the tool that the most uh, the most effective way if you do that, you have to think about that. But repurchase is, is definitely one of the options you, you, you can think of. The last one is some of the enterprise that we currently meet. Most of them have a lot of over 50% of the application that you have to retire it. That means don't move the existing one. 
just think about what is the next generation application for supporting your business. Is that the next generation application should in incorporate some of the characteristics that we recently were looking for, agility, scalability, mobility, this kind of application. So that you have to classify your applications in your in-house environment to first define what are the migration, method, uh, migration strategy on that applications before you're thinking how to adopt with the multi-cloud. Just take one simple example that typically in an enterprise environment, you've got different types of uh, system, maybe the office automation system, maybe the IT in-house applications, maybe the operation support system, or maybe the business support system. Different type of applications that will include of different component of the, the, um, the system, the IT infrastructure. Then you have to think about different type of applications, what are the strategy that is, so that you can start to define or evaluate what is the best way to do the migrations. Just I take one example that some application you just retain it, then don't move it. Maybe just put it in the existing environment, okay? But maybe you have to rehost it. Then you have to consider about is it cloud is one of the hosting platform that can, you can leverage to host that applications. Then the rest of them, you can have different strategy or that. And then that will ease off your kickstart to, to make the priority to map the priority of different type of application. What are the priority, you, what is the most critical or impactful applications that you start your cloud adoption project? Then after that, you, you can have a multi-cloud um, consideration that with different criteria or different applications requirement that which, are, which of the platform are, are best fit for your application or the next generation, the platform that you target to host with. Then at least you have to do that kind of housekeeping or inventory or assessment. We, we conduct a lot of workshops with our enterprise customer to ease off that kind of uh, discussion because without that kind of classifications, you, do, you, you are difficult to kickstart your cloud project. But with that part of that, you can clearly that most of the enterprise, a lot of applications, you're just thinking the retirement of that. Don't think about how to migrate it. Just that but and plan for the new project, and plan for the, uh, the next replacement project on that. Besides the IT, besides the, the IT technology information, there is another way that we have to consider on the cloud. Cloud is interesting thing that you can say that is technology, but it's more about the operations, the engagement, the IT operations. So in some way in the multi-cloud, if you are adopting multi-cloud, you have to think about some new way. What are the new ways? Maybe you have to develop your in-house uh, cloud expertise. Okay, how your IT, besides the original role that they are taking care of the IT infrastructure to do the console configurations, nowadays you have to develop your in-house IT expertise. But some of the enterprise will have questions that. I just got a limited IT resources. How can we do that? Maybe then you have to, you have to think about why do you can outtask some of the part operations to an expert, to an operation provider. And then you have to define what are the real applications or the real requirement for your security and control. Because all the day when we're talking about uh, cloud to an enterprise customer, they always will concern with the security and compliance. But you really, you really have to look into that. Is that those kind of compliance is still applied in the modern way? Is that still apply? Is that the data still cannot be put in the outside premises? You, you have to reveal it. And then maybe you just modernize it. The security requirement of the compliance of the enterprise, you have to modernize it. Otherwise, you're just bonding with those kind of compliance or security requirement that you cannot change anything. But of course, some of the enterprise, they have regulatory compliance. Then you have to talk with your um, regulatory department. Just like we, recently, we have one customer that in the security, uh, security industry that, um, I don't know whether you guys have attended the, the keynote session yesterday. We invite one of the customer that is a leading um, broker system uh, uh, provider that to talk about how they communicate with the regulatory, how they deploy their critical applications and application data in a cloud environment. 
so that you have to really, really look into your security and compliance requirement before you say no, we cannot put that on the cloud or off premises. The next one is you have to explore for a new way to monitor your applications. I don't know whether all, all, the, all the guests here, you have already adopted some cloud, you have put some applications on the cloud. How can you monitor? How can you control with that kind of remote ho uh, application hosting on the cloud platform? The typical way you just have some network log, system log, that is no longer the most effective way to monitor the overall, overall applications. You have to reveal it. what is the most effective way for you to monitor a distributed environment, especially all your application uh, components are putting in different cloud provider. Is that a single tool that you have to consider it so that you have better operation on that? And more important, that should be end to end. That should be end to end. What is the meaning of end to end? Monitoring an application in the old days, we are, are previously I just met up with one customer that they talk talking about the revamp of the website. They invest thousand hundred thousand dollar for revamping their website. But the CIO being asked a question by the CEO. Um, how can we measure the successful or the successfulness of the website? I imagine that the new website launch, how can we measure that in an IT point of view? Have you think about that? Is that we're still monitoring on the application, whether the server, the RAM, the CPU, the hard disk, the network performance, is it good, high or no? No longer that kind of things. We have to monitor on the, on the end user real performance. Whether your end user going to your website, the experience is good, whether your application is running smooth, whether your database response time is good, so that you deliver an excellent experience with the customers. And what are the data you collect from the website so that you can do, do more analysis on that part. That is the modern way, even to a, the basic project of a website. So that for a business support system, for example, a POS, for example, an ERP system, how can you monitor your app, the business critical applications in a modern way? So that you have to think about that before you move into the cloud. And that is one key that if you put your application on that cloud, is that your, cap your monitoring capabilities still apply to that hosting platform. By, enab by enabling that, let me have some advertisement time. HKD, we have a lot of different type of solutions to address different type of requirement from enterprise. For example, we have some consultation workshop to help you to define the migration strategy so that we, ha we have expertise to have this kind of area that we have the experience to help enterprise to move their applications to the cloud so that we can, we can give some advice and some industry patterns to you guys to kick start with the migration strategy development. And also we have different type of tools for you to secure, to monitor, to manage your cloud platform, even in a multi-cloud platform. Just one example that if you have time after my session, you go to our booth, we have a real nice demo session for a multi cloud monitoring tool we call Cowwheel. Cowwheel is an interesting tool that you can no longer only monitoring on your IT infrastructure. For example, just I said that, the CPU memory is loading. But you can also monitor the end user experience when they, they are going to your applications. No matter web based, no matter there is a mobile app. It can monitor it from your end users to click on the button, to click on the link to your applications. How many times they have to wait until the next response. How long they stay in your app. How long they waiting for the response. What kind of page that they have visited in your website. So that you have a better view instead of just an IT. But of course, in that kind of view, you can drill down into detail to see what are the IT problems for your troubleshooting. team. And it, more important, it can apply no matter you host your application in a HKT Enterprise Cloud, your private cloud, AWS, Amazon, Google, all the cloud platform, you still can apply the same tools. Even single application apply into different type of cloud platform. You still have one single dashboard for your operation team to monitor the overall architecture. Besides that, we have another methodology that we apply with the customer that, that is very, very important that some customer may think that multi-cloud adoption is just a project, but actually that is a journey. 
or we can we, we can call it is a culture change. How do IT deliver your IT service with a cloud first strategy? Cloud first strategy is not talking about all the application putting your all your application to the cloud, but you have to consider why the cloud can have more benefit to you in the new IT projects. Some some people will think that we have the planning on the on the migration project, we have to do the implementations, but more important, the more important thing is how you internalize those kind of cloud ideas. How you implement after the implementation, how can you enable your staff, enable your, your users to use a cloud platform? How can you familiar with that? And after we build, you optimize that. Because not all the enterprise with same requirement. All the enterprise require IT requirements are different. All the sorry. Is that? All the IT requirements are different and all the operation is different. So that cloud is just a platform. But how can it apply to all enterprise? That is different. And more important, besides the cloud resources, you have to consider how you connect with the cloud. Is it a, just an internet access? Is it an internet VPN access? Is it secure enough? Or even a private connection to a cloud? But if you're talking about multi-cloud, is that the connectivity provider give you enough flexibility when you connect with different type of cloud? It can be an instance, immediate effect. Private connections can help you to connect your own premises infrastructure to the cloud, different cloud. HKD, we have some service we call multi cloud connect that already have some flexibility for you to connect with your data center to different type, different cloud provider. No matter Azure, no matter AWS, no matter HKT Enterprise Cloud. You just have new project, you call us. We just do the network configuration that enable the tunnel, enable the VLAN to you to direct bring your enterprise users or data, center, or data center to the cloud infrastructure. It gives you the agility. If you, it it gives you the agility of that. And we also provide managed service on different type of cloud service so that when you kickstart a project, you, you think that a new cloud provider that you never engage with, then you still can have the capability to manage that public cloud service. Um, today we have a booth outside uh, in, at E25. Um, come and visit us. Uh, we have a lot of real live demo and use case. We have some industry use case that how we help enterprise customers to do the cloud adoptions. And just let us comment, discuss with us to explore whether we can have some more initiative or accelerating the cloud adoption of that. But today is not all we show up all our uh, our solutions or capability on that on in HKT. We have launched our social media platform that on LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, if you're interested, please welcome, welcome to follow us. We have a lot of information, the best patterns for cloud, for video analytics, for IoT, different type of solutions you can find in our social media page. And that is real time. We have a lot of information can share with you on that part. Follow with us and then um, if you got some feedback, if you got some inquiry, just contact us, contact our sales team or even uh, let us message that we can have further discussion with you on different type of solutions and also the multi cloud adoption journey. Thank you. Thanks a lot for all your time. Hope that this kind of sharing can help you in to kickstart or to think more about your cloud adoption in different enterprise. Thank you.